Launching a rocket into orbit is challenging, but bringing it back safely to Earth is much more difficult. Well, spacecraft's re-entry is a tricky business for several reasons. When an object enters the Earth's atmosphere, it experiences a few forces, including gravity and drag. Gravity will naturally pull an object back to Earth, but gravity alone would cause the object to fall dangerously fast. Luckily, Earth's atmosphere contains particles of air. As the object falls, it hits and rubs against these particles, creating friction. This friction causes the object to experience drag or air resistance, which slows down the object to a safer entry speed. This friction is a double-edged sword, however. Although it causes drag, it also causes intense heat. Specifically, Starship faced intense temperatures of about 1,649 degrees Celsius, double that in nuclear reactors. Despite being made of stainless steel, which has a high melting point, under such harsh conditions, Starship will still easily turn into a giant fireball, not only self-destructing, but also threatening other objects in space. So how Starship will deal with that? SpaceX has a genius solution to protect orbital Starship on re-entry. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Well, the solution I want to mention here is an upgraded version of the heat shield that has proven to be much more modern and reliable than the previous versions. The heat shield is the main part of thermal protection systems, which play an essential role in protecting Starship or any reusable spacecraft from the extremely high temperatures generated by air friction during atmospheric re-entry. Starship's heat shield is composed of thousands of hexagonal black tiles that can withstand temperatures of 1400 degrees Celsius. Like other components on Starship, TPS tiles or star bricks by another name are also designed to be used many times without maintenance between flights. The tiles are made of a dense, tough ceramic, not too heavy and float, and are attached with pins rather than glued, with small gaps in between to allow for heat expansion. Their hexagonal shape facilitates mass production, and it offers no straight path for hot gas to accelerate through the gaps. In addition, the exterior side, exposed to re-entry temperatures, is given a protective coating of black glass. Black tiles reflect about 90% of the heat they're exposed to back into the atmosphere, while the tile's interior absorbs the rest. The interiors radiate absorbed heat so slowly that after landing, the tiles take hours to cool. The amount of heat shield on Starship's variants is not the same. Ship 24 had about 18,000 dinner plate-sized bricks, while Ship 20 and earlier build had nearly 17,000 bricks, many of which were a bit larger. Because the Starship is so large, covering its entire body with heat shields is not an economically smart choice, so the Starship only has heat shields on one side. This makes sense because stainless steel is inherently heat-resistant, so the star bricks on one side are just an additional layer of protection as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere with the belly flop maneuver at high speed. At this point, perhaps you'll wonder how SpaceX made such tiles that can withstand very high temperatures during the re-entry. To be honest, it's not as complicated as many people think. The tiles just embrace two main ingredients, air and silica. Silica is an excellent insulator because it transports heat slowly. When the outer portion of a tile gets hot, the heat takes a long time to work its way down through the rest of the tile to the spacecraft's skin. Because of the high temperatures that spacecraft are subjected to while traveling in space, the ratio of air to silica in the Starship's heat shield is 90% air and 10% silica. That's because air has low thermal conductivity and high specific heat capacity, increasing the brick's heat resistance. Starship's individual tiles are not made in Texas. Rather, they are manufactured at the address 8550 Astronaut Boulevard in Cape Canaveral, Florida. In there, there is a place called the SpaceX Bakery where SpaceX's master chefs make yummy cakes serving the company's staff. Don't believe it right away, I'm just kidding. 
That building is actually devoted to the production of their heat shield tiles, where the production process will occur like below. First of all, they will use the slurry mix to cast billets, and one billet will make two tiles. The inspection began in casting where they will be sintering billets. Next, in the machining stage, tiles are created from a billet and then shaped into the desired form. After shaping, the product will be coated with two layers before drying in the kiln. To make the tiles more dry, the waterproofing stage is applied to drive out water from the tiles and apply a coating. The process will end at the final assembly of the tile, namely the hardware. From there, we can say safely that Starship's TPS tiles are made in a simple process but still guarantee high quality. This has been proven through the previous tests. During Starship's first integrated test flight this year, for example, there were no reports of faults on the heat shield. Although during testing of Ship 24 last year, there were cases of cracked tiles and peeling. Clearly, SpaceX has made great strides in perfecting this system. In the 20-4 Starship launch, when traveling at more than 7 kilometers a second, much faster than the speed of sound, we saw the vehicle's exterior glow red-hot from the heat generated by friction with the atmosphere. It should be melting, but thanks to its heat shields, it doesn't. One more interesting tidbit after that explosion. Some around South Padre Island found Starship heat shield tiles, and they felt excited at this new design. Even on XA, there is even a video on X that records the experiment of torching a piece of Starship heat shield that was picked up. The results are impressive as the heat is dissipated very well without causing damage to the tiles. What the heat shield has just done is solid evidence that SpaceX has learned and developed very well from the technology of its predecessor, the Space Shuttle. Although smaller in size than Starship, the shuttle was covered by a number of tiles up to 24,000 with various shapes, sizes, and materials. This comes from its design with a complex curvature that extends in all three dimensions, and the amount of heat affecting each location is not the same. Therefore, it required a wider covered area as well as a separate type of tile for each area. It seems to be inconvenient when shields from a certain area fall, you have to find an exact replacement for that area or take additional time to create new ones. By contrast, designing heat tiles on Starship is much simpler and quicker as you just make and copy a hexagon-shaped sort with the same material and size. Besides, because the vehicle's material is stainless steel that surpasses aluminum used in NASA's spacecraft in resistance to heat, as I said, SpaceX can remove the unnecessary amount of star bricks on Starship, helping cut down on mass and cost. SpaceX has also followed NASA in using silica to create TPS bricks, but Elon Musk is worried about a repeat of the Columbia disaster in 2003 for his rocket. For that reason, he really focused on strengthening the bond between the heat shield layers and the vehicle's body. The deaths of seven NASA astronauts in that 2003 accident proved that glue was never a reliable option for space travel, so SpaceX came up with mechanical repair solutions. It is steel studs that are robotically welded onto the sides of the vehicle. Although in the first launch, Starship blew up before reaching orbit so we did not have a chance to witness the full capability of the system. Hopefully, the next flight will be a good opportunity for both SpaceX and us to discover the ultimate limit of this heat shield. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.